boasts beauty, adventure, and opportunity. With picturesque towns, large expanses of wilderness, and everything in between, it's a state that is just waiting to be explored. As we meet the people and communities that make up this great granite state, we'll uncover what truly makes it unique. Hi everyone, I'm your host Kate Sullivan and this is New Hampshire Life. You're gonna love it here. On this week's episode, we spend some time here at Mount Sunapee State Park, home to the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen's Annual Fair, and home to Mount Sunapee's Adventure Park. But first, we spend time meeting the people behind the scenes of this famous fair and learn more about the juried vendors who show up for nine days to share their craft with the public. Then we head to the Adventure Park, where I'll be swinging from the treetops, overcoming my fear of heights, and having so much more fun than I had imagined. I'm so happy to have you with us. Now let's head into the fair. We're at the 88th Annual Craftsman's Fair. Um, we are thrilled to be here once again at Mount Sunday Pea Resort. We've actually had the fair here for over 60 years and we're just fortunate that we are able to produce this beautiful event in such a beautiful space. We are just so amazed actually by the range of work. It's never the same and I think that's what's exciting about being um, part of the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen. You get to see um, the creativity at work and how it grows over the years. You can find everything here at the Annual Craftsman's Fair. Um, anything in the world of traditional or contemporary craft is represented here, from earrings to glassware to clay to uh, shrinky dink. Uh, it's, it's an amazing celebration of the media categories that we represent at the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen. Hi, my name is Shayla Flynn. I'm from Conway, New Hampshire. I'm showing here at the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen and this is my work, which is clay and stone mosaic. My work started by looking at aerial photographs of land. It was a desire to use stone, and then I was looking at aerial photographs of land, and I was thinking about the textural elements of that. So the resultant work is a combination of textures derived from beach, earth, water. So it's the glinting of water, how rain hits sands, and so I kind of work on both a micro and a macro level. Well, I moved to New Hampshire from six years ago, and so I came here without community. And part of, the, part of what has happened within the League is, is community. And it's also opportunity, opportunity to show opportunity, both within this forum at the, at the, the large craft fair, and also there's smaller shows. And their advocacy is also amazing. So it's really a, an honor to be part of this organization. <laughs> Good morning. The Craftsmen have opened their fair. Welcome to the 88th Annual Craftsmen's Fair. We hope you enjoy your day. So the fair is an opportunity for our organization to really celebrate craft. And we do that by, you know, having booth holders who make craft sell their wares here. But we also have demonstrations that are educational, hands-on experiences, or you can observe. Um, the best part of meeting a craftsperson is you can find out what their process is. So one of my favorite things to do every morning is have a cup of coffee in a handmade mug. I believe the coffee tastes better because I know that one of our artists, Andy Hampton per se, uh, made it. So I remember that experience I had with him when I bought the mug um, and how much I enjoyed him. And um, I've been a collector of craft my entire life and I have all my friends and all the people I've met along the way in my house and it's just a wonderful feeling. It's, it's extraordinary that this that there's this caliber of artistry yes. here in New Hampshire and and then local you know because it's from some Maine I think in Massachusetts and Vermont also but it's wonderful so inspiring am I doing awful well, then you're doing all right but you you see the way it's bending down because you're not <laughs> you see that so we're gonna see if we can I meant that. it I to go like it. that. Well, thank you, Gary, so much for letting me have my hand in this. My pleasure. There are so many other 
tents here and I want to go explore, so we're going to go wander. Okay. Thank well, you so much. Hi everyone, um, I'm Becky Sawyer and welcome to my booth at the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen's Annual Fair. This is my first year at the fair and I am overjoyed to be here um, as a kid. I've come here for decades with my family um, and it's just really interesting the different perspective having a booth as opposed to being a participant as opposed to being a spectator shopper and I am more than delighted with this organization, which I have been fond of um, and admired uh, my entire life. It's cool because it's all different kinds of stuff. There's fabric, there's pottery, there's metalwork, and it's always been an inspiration to me to come here every summer. And it's the week before my birthday, so I was always able to pick out something from here. Becky helped me pick out these beautiful sunflower earrings, which I have to say are very lightweight, which I really love. Um, and I love all your collections. You do such a great job incorporating in color and design. Thank you. Yes, I love color myself, so it makes it a lot of fun for me. And I like also that they're very light. Yeah. And that I try and make something for everyone from really small um, post earrings to large, more abstracts. Well, you make it very easy to shop. <laughs> I could buy up your whole booth. Uh, welcome to my booth at the uh, annual League of New Hampshire Craftsman's Fair. My name is Steve Hayden. I'm a furniture builder and sculptor, and I work in wood, metal, and clay. And I started as a material science engineer, actually, which got me very interested in just materials in general, which shows in my work where I work in with combining wood and metal and clay and how the interaction of the different materials uh, play together is, is what I love to do. Um, spend a lot of time trying to figure out what is best about the material for my work and what is going to work best in that context. I've been uh, an exhibitor here at the fair for about 21 years um, and this is a rare opportunity for New Hampshire artists. I, we live in, mostly live in small towns, small areas and an opportunity for us to come and meet 20,000 plus adoring spectators of our work who are here to buy the work is just a, such a tremendous opportunity and and honestly I need to express gratitude to the to the League of New Hampshire craftsmen for giving us this opportunity. I've been coming to this fair at least a dozen years. I wish I'd known about it sooner. Uh, we found a new artist today who does work in wax carvings um, and bought something from her. So I also like finding new people uh, who I might look for again next year. In Berlin City, we make it easier to find and buy an electric vehicle. And for the first time ever, we're bringing all these options right here. Welcome to Berlin City Electric Vehicle Store pop-up. While we still sell thousands of gas vehicles per day, we now have electric options like Nissan Leaf. And we have a large selection of used Teslas. Yes, Teslas. What's that? You want less wheels? How about one? They're really quiet. <laughs> And they're fast. So if you're looking to try or buy an electric vehicle or a one wheel, stop by at any of our locations because life is easier at Berlin City. Hi, I'm Corrine Romer. I'm the owner of Bear Rock Adventures. And I'm Tanner Velagin. I'm the general manager. Bear Rock Adventures is an adventure outfitter. We offer ATV rentals, snowmobiles, play and stay packages with glamping and lodging. So if you're in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, come in and visit Bear Rock Adventures and we'll set you up with all your rental needs. And even if you don't want to go out for a rental, we have plenty of retail here with all the adventure brands, 5 and 9, Climb, and way more. 
Hi everyone, I'm Brad Page, President and CEO of Kenny Bunk Savings Bank. We talk about being purpose driven, so we really want to make sure that our entire communities thrive. So while we always take care of our customers, it's really important to us that the health and well-being of the communities in which we're located is strong. We do that through a number of different ways, through our volunteering, but we also give 10% of our net profits back. In short, we're here to help. How can we help you? And thanks for watching New Hampshire Life. just across the parking lot from where we were at the League of New Hampshire Crafts and Fair here at Mount Sunapee. And now we're at the Adventure Park mm -hmm. and I'm with my good friend Angie Lane, yeah. who's the Executive Director of Red River Theaters. Mm -hmm. uh, not usually part of your job description. It's not, I wish it was. Like, I know. I wish it was. So I'm Have you come here before? Never, never. So I'm excited to be here with you. So we're both afraid of heights. Yes. And we're gonna try our hand at the aerial course, so. We're, we're gonna kill it. Let's get it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Peter Dish. I'm the general manager here at beautiful Mount Sunapee Ski Resort in Newberry, New Hampshire. And we're staying outside our Adventure Center, getting ready to check out the Adventure Park. Summer at Mount Sunapee is one of the best kept secrets. You know, everybody thinks it's a ski resort, you go skiing and that's about it. But come summertime, we have a wide variety of activities and all starts here at the Adventure Park. So we've got an aerial challenge course, sky rides to the summit, disc golf, archery, mini golf, uh, Beckbrook Barbecue out by the, the brook here, um, just out in the Adventure Park itself. I love the aerial course. So we have an aerial challenge course that has four loops, goes up through the canopy of the trees. And what's really cool about it, it's one of my favorite spots to just sit and watch people. Um, you know, you get groups that some are really anxious, some are nervous, and it's really nice to see, you know, people's true core come out when they're in there. You know, when somebody's scared, the employees, their, their friends, their family are cheering them on. You see them get through it, so it's going to be really exciting to see you have a crack at it. So you guys have talk about how many theaters you have and what you offer for people who maybe haven't been to Red River. I know who hasn't been. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So we are a three screen theater. We have two large stadium seating um, auditoriums. Mm -hmm. So one seats 156, one seats 109. And then our screening room is fantastic. It gives you a more intimate setting. It's kind of like if I had all the money in the world, this is what I would have in my house. Um, but each uh, has its own incredible like tech experience. You're getting the greatest sound, great picture, and we're showing amazing movies that you frankly have to drive you know, yeah. to, the, to Boston or to Portland to see. Um, so it gives great access for people to enjoy first run indie films. But mm -hmm. you know, we do other things like Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, which is fun. Along. And how can people find out more about what, what you guys are up to? Great, you guys can go to redrivertheaters.org, find out what we're playing, what's going on. You can even support us. Find out everything that's up to date Red River right on our website. And then go have the best popcorn in the state. Yeah, best popcorn. We use we use real butter. Awesome. Popcorn, candy, movies, beer, wine, all the things. All the things. <laughs> <laughs> Nice job! Way to go. We Touch survived. I know. Touch and go. Yeah, that, there was that one. It was a little scary. So if you're looking for an easy summer adventure, we're only a two-hour drive from Boston. It's a great place to come up, spend a day, spend a weekend. Summer, fall, winter, there's something for everybody. So check out our website for full details and bring the whole family, bring your friends. It's a great way to connect with the outdoors. Local has been very important to us ever since our beginning. 
Our customers love local, they love buying local. We have lots of studies that show that local is important to our customers. And so supporting the local brewers, the local farmers, it's a huge part of what we do every day. Being part of the Hannaford family for Great Rhythm Brewing is huge. So working with partners like Hannaford to get that beer out and make it easily accessible across the state or in our own backyard is, is really you know, important for us. And to be able to work with a partner like that is, is huge to help us grow. So the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen is a well-established organization that supports the makers of fine craft. Uh, we support our artists through marketing efforts, professional development, and the opportunity actually to participate in this nationally recognized event, the annual Craftsman's Fair, which comes every August. We have seven galleries throughout the state of New Hampshire, and that's an opportunity for our artists to have their work sold 365 days of the year. And if you'd like to become a member of the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen, the information is on our website, nhcrafts.org. Hey, I'm Kara Chase. And I'm Corey Tessier. And we're managing partners of the Legacy Home Group at Keller Williams Lakes and Mountains Realty. So Legacy for us means history. Corey and I both grew up here. So for us, our roots go deep in the Lakes region, specifically on the lake. So for us to be able to work with buyers and sellers and share with them our passion for the area is I think what drives us on a daily basis. And we've seen a lot of changes over the past year. We've seen a lot of people um, coming from out of state that are just discovering what we've known all along and the most beautiful place that we have here in the middle of New Hampshire that's so accessible, you know, to Boston, to Maine, um, and within kind of an hour, you can get to everywhere. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more about what we do here in New Hampshire and what the Lakes region has to offer, we would love to help. You can find us on social media at Legacy Home Group NH. Um, and if you have any questions, just let us know there and we would love to help. I love driving through New England towns and seeing it in. That conjures things to me. Comfort food, maybe white napkins, certainly a full bar. And that's because it's in our bloodline. It is American history, it's New Hampshire history, and it's worth preserving on that basis alone. I'm Jarvis Coffin, and this is my wife, Marcia, and we are the owners, innkeepers of the Hancock Inn and Fox Tavern in Hancock, New Hampshire. This inn was established the year that George Washington took office in 1789, and a man named Noah Wheeler built the inn. It was the seventh tavern to come into the village of Hancock because there was a lot of commerce flowing through the town. He had the unique idea to offer people a place to sleep overnight, not just to stop and refresh and get back into their stagecoach. The Hancock Inn and Fox Tavern, how can I help you? We like to think that we provide a nice community center for the town of Hancock. It's the center of hospitality. Even if we're not open for dinner, we leave all the lights on because people want the inn to be happy and it makes them happy. Hospitality in the year of COVID has been scaled back. I was very nervous to reopen with some of the restrictions that were put on it because it did limit the guest experience. But people have been incredible. They never flinched about those changes. The good news is that the human spirit is adventurous and it wants to travel and it needs to be among some other people. We've worked very hard during our time here to be good stewards and we love being the neighbors of the people who live here. We want so much to create the environment and energy of this place to pass forward. We want to preserve that to hand off to the next people.
recently met up with our friends over at Hannaford to learn all about their zero waste programs and efforts on sustainability. Take a look. Rainy days don't seem so wet. Stormy nights don't stay. Come on, Atlas. Come on. Got a From the moment that we met. My name's George Parmenter. I lead health and sustainability work for Hannaford Supermarkets. What zero food waste means to us that there is absolutely no food waste from these stores going to landfill anywhere across our operating territory. The way we keep food waste out of the landfill is by having a very kind of structured approach to where that food goes. So first, and obviously we try not to have food waste if we can possibly avoid it. And that uh, is addressed by our inventory ordering practices and safe handling in the stores, keeping things that are meant to be cool, cool, that sort of thing. So when we do have food waste as a first priority, we try to make sure that food gets to people in need. And we have programs in place to make sure that happens. Second on the rung of the hierarchy is to donate that food to animals, uh, livestock, feed. The idea there is to uh, give food to create more food, if you will. And um, we have programs at a number of our stores where local farms uh, can come to the stores to pick up that food for feed. And that also hits the key parts of our uh, involvement in the communities. We like to support local farmers, we like to support the food locally, and it kind of meshes very well with that. Lastly, if, uh, if it can't be donated to people or animals, it goes into our food waste recycling bins. What AgriCycle does with it when they get it is uh, they take it to their operations. They have one in New York and one in Maine. They add the food waste to the waste from the dairy farm, which is cow manure. They put it in a giant uh, anaerobic digester, which is a just giant vessel. Uh, it cooks for a little while. That creates methane. The methane is captured. It is piped into a generator. That generator runs and creates turbines, uh, uh, runs turbines that generates energy onto the grid. And please Hi, I'm Teresa Labreck and I own the Ferry Farm. We're here in uh, Northwood, New Hampshire, and um, it's a friendly farm that welcomes visitors. My partnership with Hannaford started, uh, I think, about nine years ago, actually, when I went into the store to see if they had any throwaway food that the farm could benefit from. And ever since then, I've been part of this arrangement where I pick up food that Hannaford um, feels people wouldn't want to buy. They got a bruise on them or something like that. I pick them up and I bring them home here and feed them out to the animals. And the animals, of course, love it. And um, it makes for healthier animals and happier animals. So it's been great. Oh, I, I love the fact that Hannaford has the same consciousness of waste and zero zero waste zero hunger um, sustainability you know I, I applaud them for this I, I, I wish it was contagious I hope it will become contagious someday because we do need to spread that out and take better care of our world I'll be your go-to cause these are youthful days we will grow in great we're so better Hi, I'm Sherry Stevens, Community Relations Manager for Hannaford Supermarkets. Hunger relief is a big part of the focus for Hannaford as we get out into our communities to try to partner with organizations across our communities to make a difference. So these local hunger relief agencies that we partner with come to our stores early in the morning after we've culled product throughout these fresh departments, the healthy departments, produce, deli, meat, bakery, frozen, all of the perishable departments. So they pick them up at our stores in the morning and often distribute them same day out into the communities. So what do we do now with all this food to get it ready? Uh, so this, there's two areas we have. We have the farmers that we give pig food to, and then we also do have pantries that will give food that's still edible, um, right. still safe for human consumption yeah. that we want to have it be as much food that we can still eat as possible, right. but not necessarily sellable. Uh, so if there's anything that has, um, you know, like if this plum had finger marks on it, we can okay. still get it at the food pantry, they can still wash it off, you know, have it so that's not all ending up in the right. pig food. Um, if this had had mold on it or anything where it was beyond human consumption, it would go into the pig farmer. 
So we'd have one box for the farmer, okay. one box for the food pantry. Okay. And then we go ahead and process those out back and get them to where they need to go. It feels nice, like uh, knowing that this food is maybe not gonna be here, but that it goes to someone else who, you know, really fresh, healthy right. food. I like that. It, right. It's a good feeling. And I love that Hannaford does that. Hi, my name's Randy Whitehead. I'm the food pantry director at St. Paul's Church in Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, we have been partnered with Hannaford for probably close to 10 years. We are a uh, pantry for the church that serves all of, pretty much all of Merrimack County. And uh, right currently now we're doing probably 45 to 50 clients a week. Uh, and that represents probably about 300 family members. And I come down here on a weekly basis, generally Tuesday mornings, and uh, pick up anywhere from four to six cases of meat to bring back to the pantry to serve the clients in the community. Look at this beautiful fruit that is going to go to the local community today through Randy. Exactly. It's pretty awesome. It sure is. All right, Randy, are you ready for me? Okay. Ugh. That is one heavy box of oranges. We want to thank Hannaford for a behind the scenes look and education on how their zero waste initiatives play out throughout their stores. That was a great opportunity to see how it really works out throughout the state and in the different communities. And we had a great time at Mount Sunapee Resort at the League of New Hampshire Craftsman Fair. Highly recommend you put that on your to-do list for the summer. And then of course the aerial course and everything else at the Adventure Park. Hope you follow our itinerary. It was a great day. We'll see you next week. I am always hungry. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this whole bag of popcorn. Oh my God. I'm gonna eat the whole bag. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is very I good. Know. Thank you. Impressive. Thank you.